I started understanding that like, yes, I'm part one part of the project, but for most directors and like DOPs, they're looking at, you know, how do I frame this? How do I tell the story with the frame? They all, they just, you've gotten the job, so you're good already. You've brought something they want to see. So now their job is really just how to frame you and then tell their story visually. Hi everybody, it's Haley. I wanted to let you know before we start this episode that the sound quality isn't great. And that is because we recorded this episode over a Zoom. We were in London at the time and we had an opportunity to speak with Ingrid, but she wasn't in London, she was in Norway. So we did what we had to do to get you this information. Also, Indiana was out of town, so this podcast episode was co-hosted with Alex Wright of Delta Acting Community. We love her, we know you guys love her, so turn up the episode, the information is really great. Oh my god, we're all... (laughs) I think there's a certain type of person that goes into acting that might be a manifesting generator. Probably. Yeah, probably. So let's let's start that then. How did you get into acting? What's been your journey? Um, okay, I'll do like not the long, long version, but um, I think I was like six or no, seven in school. We did like musicals every year. I was like a cripplingly shy kid. Like I was very loud in kindergarten and then like, but like super shy and like it was so strange. Didn't like strangers, like it, all of that. And um, I had one teacher, um, I'm like conflating a lot of like facts into one, otherwise it gets a long story. I'm a Virgo after all. Um, my, I had a, he was the principal at, at the school and he kind of saw that like, like I had, you know, he saw that I had something. So, but I never dared to ask for like a solo or whatever, but he like put me in a role and like, I remember playing like a lioness in some sort of like zoo musical, like who knows what it was. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, I get to wear this cute costume. And like, it, I was so terrified. I think I, like, I think I just remember feeling like I was going to die. And then on the day with like all the parents and everything, we had like this uh, big auditorium space where the the seats kind of like came down and like they, they were like steps in like a big square. And I remember the spotlight came on me and like stepped in and I like did it. And like, it was like, (laughs) then everything disappeared and I could just do my thing. And then I kind of blacked out and then it was fine. Mm -hmm. Um, And after that, like, he just like put me in things. Like I never got to play Annie, um, but I was like Pepper, like (laughs) one of the kids. Okay. The true star of Annie is Pepper. Thank you. Thank you. So I have, you know, I did my little thing. Um, and I think after that, I was just like, I have siblings, but they're all super, like a lot older than me. So I grew up basically watching and acting with like my TV. I was by myself in my room. I was like acting out things. I was watching Xena Warrior Princess. I like made costumes. Like I was, you know, I was doing it. Um, and then by the time I reached high school, uh, I, so I'd been dancing ballet through all of this. So I was like, right, I'll apply to a performing arts high school. Cause we have to pick our majors in high school in Norway. And I was like, right, I'll, I'll audition for ballet. So I did. And then I got in and then last minute I changed my major to acting. <laughs> so like, yes, because I had seen Moulin Rouge and I was like, oh that's what I want to do I want to be like I want to be beautiful I want to wear gorgeous costumes I want to die I want (laughs) to sing I want to dance I want to kiss cute men boys (laughs) you know it was all of it like it was so fantastical I remember I saw that film like 83 times from there I like didn't really look back but I also like didn't have the confidence really but like it was that thing of like when I was allowed to just do it um it was like a different beast took over and then it wasn't me but having to be myself was like very painful like you know like when you're doing acting you like you have to step up and like be so confident and like I'm first I'm and, like in Norway like like no you need to not be better than other people you need to just like s- stay in line or whatever you know it's like very 
they call it tall poppy syndrome in England. Um, oh, poppy so syndrome. Cool. Yeah, don't stick out. Don't be better. You're not be like we have. We have like this author here wrote this like law. Like it's kind of jokey, but it's not. Um, and it's all about like don't think you're better than everyone else. Just you know all of this stuff yeah, to like humble you. Teaching children they're not special here, which it's is terrible. Hard for me. <laughs> yeah, like. I, I get I get it because like n you know not everyone's gonna win the prize but at least like give them the option of feeling like they can you know yeah um but yeah so then uh I was in high school doing acting and then I had a teacher towards the you know our exams were like create a movement piece create you know take these yeah. two plays and then here's the theme so I, I remember we did did the bald soprano mixed with who's afraid of Virginia Woolf based on a, a separate theme. Um, and then we had to write a completely new script and you get two days to do it and put it up and get the costumes and everything. Like it's intense. Like that's all you do. You're at school from nine to like 10 PM, you know, it's, it's like, and I loved it. Um, it's, it's, it's very much like we learned Stanislavski in high school. Uh, everything's like device theater. Um, they don't believe in, I remember back in the day, like don't learn the lines just like, which I thought was really difficult. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's like literally have the script, but just paraphrase until you know the lines. And that's I remember I was like, that's yeah. active, that's active analysis. Yeah. 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 Personally. I don't feel free when I do that. Like I need to know them and then I can play around. Yeah. That's kind of how, how I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. Like I that's just, whole, yeah. Dr. Carnegie's whole thing. Speaking of Dr. Carnegie is active analysis. Yeah. yeah. I remember I like never really understood the active analysis, I think, or maybe I did. I don't remember. I don't use it now anyway. So, mm. yeah. um, or maybe we I just do. Memorize. No, we just yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get off book and then you're good. Yeah. But I think the oh. point is still there. Like when you're really in it, it should feel improvised. Mm. You know, when you're really <sighs> living in it, it should feel that same kind of like right on the, on like you're on your toes and, the, and everything like is needed in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But for me, I feel like if I do know the lines really well, I can feel yeah, that way and I can mess it up and yeah, like I can play around and and if somebody else like messes up their line, I know how to work around it because I know their lines, you know, it's just, and it, your body yeah. feel like cement before you're memorized. Yes. Mine does. Yes. But I feel like I'm handcuffed until I'm completely yeah. memorized. That's like, why it's I so do important to move while you yeah. dance, you know, because. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Do you guys dance around when you learn yes. lines? And I pace and I dance. Yeah. Actually, I drive. I drive. I drive. I should be doing more, but I'm usually in my car. It's so important because otherwise your body memorizes it still and then everything yeah. is still. I'm like, yeah. I only know my lines if I You're like, hi, sorry. I just need to like get I need to pretend <laughs> I'm driving. Okay. Just don't look at me. Uh. Don't, look, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> so what was the decision to then apply to USC? Yes. Yeah, so uh okay. So I always wanted to, I, I literally, since I was like 10, I was like, dad, I'm going to the States. I'm going to be a big star. I'm going to be in the States. Yes. <laughs> he's like, are. he's like, yes, you're going to walk the, the, the runway, um, the, um, red carpet, uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. He always said that like all the time, whenever I was like doubting myself, he's like, you're number one. You're going to walk the red carpet on Hollywood Boulevard. And I'll circle back to that later. Um, but he, so, so when I was 16, I like moved to New Zealand on my own to like go for an exchange year. So he was already like, yeah, you do your thing. Um, and I think I always wanted to go to a conservatory um, as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, but then I was like, you know, I'll do my first year of school in Norway and then that, that'll that make it easier to transfer because I went to American College of Norway and then I was a huge Grey's Anatomy fan at the time. So I was like, Shonda Rhimes went to USC. I'm applying to the school. It looks fantastic. Um, it's sunny. It's California. I'll be in, in LA. Like, this will be Hollywood. Like, it'll just be so great. I got into USC and like, like, because I was listening to your, your podcast episode and like, like you, I was like, this massive envelope. And I was like, oh my God, wow. <laughs> this is great look at this letter it's so official and I was like I'm just gonna go because and then I got student loans from Norway to go there and I was like it's done because I had just graduated and you reached out to me to ask me about grad school programs because I graduated 2012 and then I yeah. put you with Hillary because I was like she coached me and she was awesome yeah 
And I think she probably told me about it. Or maybe I don't. Yeah. I don't, e- either way, I was like, I want to apply to the three top schools. So I applied to US, uh, U- UCSD and I applied to Harvard and Yale, um, mostly because they were attached to professional theaters. Um, and then I obviously spoke to you and then Hillary coached me for grad school. And um, I just, yeah, I just uh, I got some great monologues. I already knew kind of what I wanted to work on by then. Um, because, and I feel like I was approaching the age, like I always wanted to work on, you know, much more mature women, like mature, complicated characters. But I feel like when you're 18, like, yeah, <laughs> doesn't really fit you, but I've never been an ingenue. So like, I don't know how to do that. I love women who are so viciously ambitious that they don't like uh, when it comes down to it, they'll like sacrifice everything. And I, <laughs> I'll, I'll dissect that in therapy at some point. Um, But Actually, it's really funny. And just if I can digress for a second, like I did that monologue here in Norway for the Ibsen Theater because they were looking for new actors. And I was like, oh, my God, they're not looking at the people coming out of the theater academy here. That's crazy news. So I did that monologue and I think I do it really well. Um, and then I did a Norwegian monologue. But the, the arts here is so different. And like I got to the second round and they were like, yeah, we we liked it, but we just didn't. We wanted to see you like more of you, like a five minute monologue where I wax poetic about just nothing. And I was like, um. wow. <laughs> how, could, how could I show you more of me? Let's see. I'm like, isn't it about what I can do and like aspects of me that I do really well as a character rather than me being like, woke up today, had a piece of toast. Like, cause I went to some workshops here where they were like workshopping new, like new writing, like where people write their own monologues and stuff. And like, one of them was like, today I woke up, put some marmalade on my toast. It was cold outside. And I was like, Oh my god! I don't care. Like, I don't care to <laughs> like, watch we this. Queen Margaret in here it's and talk about the outside. murder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally. But like, that's art, not like what you have for breakfast. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, audition for the three schools. Um, Harvard was the first, so I did all of them on the East Coast. And Harvard was I was number one on the first day to audition for Harvard, and I'd Whoa. read. Ec- I know, no press. I read uh, Eckhart Tolle on the way, on the train in. I was staying with my family in New Jersey and I read Eckhart Tolle in New Earth on the way in. And I was like, I got this like buzzy feeling. I felt so good. Like my ego was in check. It was fine. <laughs> All of this stuff. And I walked in and we warmed up and they made it feel like really like a workshop environment. So it wasn't scary. Um, I did my two monologues and um, Scott and Nancy were like really cool and like they had me do more stuff. I had my little prop with like my handkerchief with blood on it. It was great. Um, I just had a really cool time Um, and then went up to Yale and did uh, the audition there. But I could like I could tell they had already picked because I was like one of the last days and I was like, they've already picked who they want for their like ensemble that they're building. Like they weren't looking at me. And the only person who regressed from that group was this like shy guy in the corner um, mm-hmm. who like didn't really like <laughs> say much, you know, so I was like, okay, well, they, you know, they were looking for their types. Um, but yeah, then two weeks later, I got into Harvard and I was like, couldn't believe <laughs> it. I was like, first, on, first to start off the round and like first day, like, how is that possible? Like, that's so weird. But I think it was a good placement for me. You know, I got to do my thing in the beginning and then worked out yeah oh that's awesome and then that they're, they're connected with moscow art <laughs> a part of it actually part of why i wanted to go there as well was that moscow connection because it, it in europe that's a really good thing to have on your cv to have a degree from moscow art theater school because all of the european theaters for the most theater schools are based on that theater mm-hmm. um like any training like here in norway like uh yeah, it's 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 that Moscow Art Theater School. So um, even my high school was like based on it. So it's it's that Stanislavski training is uh, ranked really high. What were the differences that you noticed between all of the training in different places? Were there different types of training? Do you feel like you got do, like cool different skills from each place? Um, 
Yeah, the car, the uh, USC training, because we, like, we basically picked our own training in many ways, right? Like, because we had to seek out our own professors. So uh, I, Mary Jo, did you study yeah. with her? Yeah. She's, would she's you, great. Would you explain what you mean by picking out your own professors? At your yes. Year? So, like, for me, it was, like, word of mouth a little bit. Like, who was who was the good teacher to study with and who was not. And, like, trying to get into the class if it was full and stuff. So, Mary Jo had a really, really good reputation. She had a long resume. Um, and, she, yeah, I just, like, really looked up to her. And she did um, some Shakespeare. She also did, like, contemporary also, um, was it Stephanie, Stephanie for directing? Stephanie Shore. Yeah. 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 You had to so, do on a BA and not yeah. A okay. Yeah, so it you wasn't can, a like, program. Teacher and like ask them to be in their course. Yeah. I if see. it was full. So You're like, for it. yeah. So like I had friends who like did like one acting class and I was like, I'm filling them all with all of the acting classes <laughs> and then I'll do directing. Like you plan out your own trajectory in your own career, basically, which mm -hmm. I, I now look back and I'm like, that was definitely the right choice because like no one's going to look after you in real life. So you got to like plan the stuff out. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Cause like when I think back on my favorite classes I took at USC, it was like Dr. Carnegie's acting theory class where we learned mm -hmm. all about um, active analysis and Stanislavski mm -hmm. and the differences between Stanislavski and Russia and what we think of as Stanislavski in the States, which is not the same thing. And, and I asked her, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast last time, but at the end of that class, I asked her, I was like, how do I, how do I learn what he actually taught? And she's mm -hmm. like, we got to go to Russia. And I was like, when will uh -huh. I ever go to Russia? That was my freshman year at USC. And so that's why I saw her a few weeks ago. Cause I was like, I, I was like, I credit you for for the whole reason I applied to that program. And then she came and did a Delta community chat where she talked about active analysis, but oh. she's just the coolest lady. So it's like her, yeah. Steph Scheuer, Paul Backer, of course, who's since passed. Yeah. Like you really had to, where the BFAs were given a schedule, you yeah. had to create your own. And and it was so word of mouth, right? It was just being like, <laughs> yeah. who did I study with? Help me, like to all the upperclassmen, help me yeah. please. Because yeah. Yeah, you could just do like theater history. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. You and Indy talk a lot about um, networking and, uh -huh. and how like that can get such a gross new reputation because networking feels like we're needing something from someone. Like you're trying to get something. Yeah. Versus somebody. just connecting. And mm -hmm. yeah, I remember yeah. doing the 20 year friend exercise and I remember Hacker saying he was like, this is an exercise that you can really easily write off. And he was like, cause you can be like, oh, whatever. And he's like, but no, really genuinely do it. Think about how do I talk to my friends who I've known for 20 years? Mm -hmm. What like part of my voice do I speak in? Like, how do I feel in my body? What's the stuff I say? And then I remember someone was like, well, what if I like say the wrong thing or offend somebody? And he was like, well, clearly if you've been friends with someone for 20 years, they like you, you're not doing anything you know how terribly horrible, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. And then the other thing that I still say to my students and I think about with my tapes is stop thinking about your face. Oh, yes. I can see you thinking about your face. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I have to say, like, like that was the foundation of like, obviously, I don't know about you, but like, I feel like you and I have moved way more into screen um, as a natural trajectory. But so he laid a good foundation. But then I found like all this stuff that you pick up from other people and coaches and like all this idea of like behavior and like, you know, you go from like, must not think about my face to like, I can just relax and be human. Um, but I think there's a journey <laughs> that you have to kind of go through, especially when you come from theater where you're like, must struggle and put the, so much energy out there. And then <laughs> that's when I'm doing it right. Right. And then like, I was, I was talking to, um, Audrey and and she was like looking at all my tapes and she's like I can tell that you like acting and you're good but like you like acting and you want to show that you're good <laughs> and I'm like what do you mean are you saying I'm thinking about my face well the, my big connector to don't think about your face was um talking now about grad school taking Scott Ziegler's class practical yeah. science who also came actually to speak to the community um ah, cool about 
you know, the key to all presence is finding your partner more interesting than yourself. And so yeah. that's really what don't think about your face is. It's not, don't think about your face. It's think more about your partner. Yeah. And yes. so if you're putting your attention and focus and listening, that that's what listening is. It's like putting yeah. all my energy and attention and focus on you. But if I'm yeah. thinking about my face, I'm like, does my face look weird? Do I have a double chin? Like, do I look fat? Am I, am I like, like yeah. all that stuff? Which is why yeah. what you, Indy, that's what you and Indy, what y'all are doing is so important is that it is so difficult as an actor to be focused on our partner when we're worried about like, I'm in this space. I don't know how to navigate this space on set. I don't know what that person's doing over there with that piece of equipment. Right. And yeah. so now I feel like I don't feel tethered to anything. I feel totally unmoored. And so I can't listen because right. I'm just in this like floating state. <laughs> yeah. So, so enough of what's going on around you and why to not yeah. concerned about it yeah, anymore. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I guess with that, which is why I think it's so cool you've got this podcast. Um, I think- for me, it took like just experience and jobs to teach me how to how to like do like how to zone that out mm -hmm. because I started understanding that like, yes, I'm part one part of the project, but for most directors and like DOPs, they're looking at, you know, how do I frame this? How do I tell the story with the frame? They all they just you've gotten the job. So you're good already. You've brought something they want to see. So now their job is really just how to frame you and then tell their story visually. And so when I started thinking about that, I'm like, oh, they're not whispering how bad I am behind the camera. <laughs> they're yeah. literally talking about how to make me look good and like how to get the story told. And then I was like, lights hitting your face and yeah. not even yeah. you, you as an object that they have to like try not to make a shadow on. Well, I'm yeah. like, it's not about me for once. No, I yeah. was like, even like doing commercials is so it's su such a great learning curve because the clients are in set and I've had a lot of jobs where the clients are there like you can see them and they're just like you know whispering and, yeah. and it's not about you doing a bad or a good job it's literally about like are you hitting the points that they want to see in that commercial for themselves Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and on this this recent job that I had they put them in black tents so you didn't see them and I was like that's really nice actually that's like nice. Yeah. they were all they were so lovely and so complimentary but at the same time it was really nice to not have to see them you know yeah. in my periphery while yeah. you're working for them to be like pointing at something and you're like oh what oh, did I what did they just point out what did I do yeah <laughs> But yeah, I just for me, it just took the more jobs you do, the more like you just tune that stuff out. But I mean, you start a job and you're like, they're talking about me. They're going to. Um, when I mean, you come from a theater background, so much of the rehearsal process is finding and growing that story with with the director and with the other castmates. Mm -hmm. When you show up on set, it's not that it's not that there's no more. There, it's not that there's no room for discovery. It's that you you have it most you of that have discovery has been done, done. yeah and, yeah and then it's you're collaborating in a different way but it's not you know you show up to do the thing you don't yeah. show up to get the thing yeah, um, yeah. and especially especially if you're like not a lead um the what you did in the audition is like what they did in the yeah. audition is is what they want to see you know yeah, and then it again yeah and then if they want to play with you that's great then you can explore but I mean like I don't think anyone should worry about um you know you're not gonna get rehearsal time it's just not gonna happen unless you're like a lead and it's and like, like a long movie shoot of, the question of do they like this will they like it yeah of course they they did they liked it just you have to do that again and they're gonna be yeah. new lights and some new like technical things speaking yeah. of technical things, are there Technical things, technical skills that you feel like you've learned by being on set that you didn't learn in school. Um, yes, I like I, terms and stuff. I don't know, but I've learned how to. Again, I think it helped a lot for me to to go to school to yeah. learn like just being phys like spatially aware and like my dance background because for camera sometimes like just knowing where the camera is and how you're going to look in a frame. Um, and then also taking care of yourself and asking like, what's, what are you shooting? Like uh, being able to ask the director, like, what am I, like, what's the framing, you know? So you know how big or how small and like also technical things of like, is it your coverage? Like, are you like, 
obviously we want to give a thousand percent every time but like sometimes like you can't <laughs> yeah like I had a big funeral crying scene that I was like oh my lord like and I didn't really want to like I you know I had I had somebody playing my mother and she was like weeping and I was like it's not your scene but she was like weeping and weeping and weeping yeah. and I was like you're gonna be spent before you even start the scene and it's those things so like how to tailor I guess your performance and stuff in terms of what what you're shooting and what's being shot when and I I've learned a lot about myself what I need to and how to ask for it like I need to I I I I'm very visual, so I'm like, I need to understand what you're going to shoot, where I need to end up, and what you want to see. Um, and you then, request, like, a peek at the monitor to be able um, to understand that? Sometimes, but usually the directors I've worked with are like, do you want to see? Because then when I see it, I'm like, oh, I know what you're asking of me. Like, ah, just tell yeah. me. You know what I mean? Show and me. then I've also gotten like storyboards, which I'm like, that helps me with understanding what you're, you know, because like oh, for commercials, great. like beforehand, yeah. you've had yeah while you were prepping. Yeah. So I like know. I knew what they wanted, which is like very rare in commercials, especially like they don't really like to give out the storyboards. But on this recent one, I got it and I was like, oh, it's so good because it's such a visual um, project. But yeah, t in terms of technical stuff, I, I think I actually one of my big first jobs was like a series regular on a on a 25 episode show and I was like okay, okay and I love it <laughs> and, uh, and we shot like two episodes a week and I was like stepping into a role that somebody else had had before but they wanted to like redo the whole thing like as a like change the vibe of it and I just remember having to give a, a monologue to my daughter like holding because they they wanted to save time so they didn't want to do two shots at the same time so they were shooting from one side so they could cover both of us so I was like right so I was told to like hold I was holding this doll here I was literally you know in theater I would have been like faced out a little but also mm -hmm. towards her you know but here I was like half to the bookcase that was like right behind me and I was awkwardly but like also turning my head and like my upper body and then giving this like <laughs> heartfelt monologue and I'm like this is so unnatural mm -hmm. but but like then another project I had later on uh later on I was like um uh basically I was sitting opposite this lady and we were chatting and then I could tell where the I could feel the camera here and before the director was like hey can you I was like I think I just should cheat and look at the wall here because then they'll see this much of my face so you become very aware of what they need how much they need to see of you and I think the easier you can make their job the more they're gonna love you <laughs> yeah. like, I don't yeah. know if that's yeah that's my theory and I also am like I like love cinematography so much I love I love the DOPs like I just I'm like I like to learn that stuff I'm very curious about their process I like to if I can look up what they've done before I'd I like to see what their taste is what their vibe is um because that helps me also in terms of like performance. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, like it's our job to be super curious. And I think it's our job to like be interested in more than like our craft, uh, be interested in other stuff. Yeah. So I guess does that I answer wanna, any I of it? Note about something that you said where you were in a position that felt super unnatural because they were trying to save time and kind of get two shots at once. Yeah. Um, there are so many times, just for actors out there, there are so many times where you'll be on set and you'll be asked to like do something that doesn't feel natural for you and your human body or even for the character that you've created. But on the monitor, it looks fucking great. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that kind of um, communication with your operator and with your director and with the DOP is going to be something that you can trust and something that's helpful even if they're not flipping the monitor around for you to see you can trust that um everyone's trying to make a good product and tell a good exactly story. Yeah. yeah yeah and they'll tell you if you're not doing a good job yeah yeah, yeah you'll yeah. know <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so in russia we had like all this acrobatic stuff right like partnering doing candle stand you know all of this stuff that i never thought i'd be able to do um and then we had this class with uh, Marina, you know, Masha, Suzuki, but we also had 
voice with her, which was a lot of like, we sat around, made a crying face until we started crying and then laughing and crying and laughing and crying. And then I guess all of this is kind of, first and foremost, like in later projects, I realized like you have to be so uh, physically uh, a able a lot of the time to do certain things as an actor and to sustain performances especially sustain really long days um and for me it's being acutely aware of what my body can do and how it looks to the outside like what you're it's that like idea of like acting in back in the day right gesturing it's like understanding that on like a minuscule level i guess um and Russia, I don't know. It's it's. I remember Scott was saying in class, uh, in um his class, it doesn't matter how you feel on the inside. It's what like you you. We don't give a shit about what you're th like thinking in many ways. Like it's really about what you're doing, uh, physically. And so, I felt like that was such an incredible incredibly important part of our education was to have an instrument that was ready and available to do things and portray things that like maybe you don't you know you don't do in your everyday life and I've found that that stamina has helped me later in life and it has made me very you know I like it didn't used to like to exercise but I've like like I do a lot now because I'm like it keeps me safe and healthy and all of this stuff and to be able to perform long days and and do a lot of stuff that like other people might not be able to do and and also still learning this but like how to relax into uncomfortability if that makes any sense um the job I just did was like a very arduous and uncomfortable at times and it's like how do I breathe into that and stay relaxed um and then I think it's just like, you know, like, I know we've talked a little bit about Kate Blanchett, Alex, but like, it's looking at her performances and it's so physical. And I've always been like outside in in many ways. Like, well, as soon as I get the shoes and the costume on, I always think co like I'm a costume person. Like as soon as whatever this, I was doing this audition uh, on Saturday and I put this leather shirt on and I was like yeah this is the character and this becomes the sort of type of person and then that it is that like how the physicality is informed by by outside in and then for me it then the inside like comes comes into play as well um because yeah I yeah does that answer any at all absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> makes me think you know I, I remember um uh, there was a teacher once who said, and, and I totally agree with this, that like, he's like, actors should be working out every day. And he was like, not because, not because you need to have some like Hollywood body, but yeah. you need to be working out every day because you're going to understand your instrument. And also it just, the endurance that is required and the stamina yeah. that's required. And, and it's needed for both, you know, theater and TV and film. I just think they're, they're tiring in different ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my god you know when jerry seinfeld was doing jerry seinfeld um he was somebody oh uh i think when they started will and grace or something they were like in the same studio something or other and i remember seeing this interview where like um or, or somebody was doing some show right and then jerry seinfeld was like all right just get ready to work out for three hours a day because it's comedy it's so physical and you're shooting you know however many uh days and I remember being like, wow, like <laughs> it's crazy, but you need the stamina to like keep that energy up because yeah, that's exhausting. You're doing it in front of a live audience. Like yeah, theater is, is like once that train starts, like it's going and you are running and sweating and running and sweating. And then with TV and film, that stop and start is yeah. tiring in a, in a, in a, in a different way. It's, it's like, like a hit workout. Yeah. Or it's like, it feels <laughs> like a bone you tired for some rest. reason, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Do you guys find when you're doing like working on something like oh, this is going to sound weird, but like when when I'm working on something, it doesn't matter whatever I eat. Like <laughs> it's like I'll just like naturally like I don't know if it's the stress or whatever, but like sometimes I'll just like lose weight a little. Like yeah, you drop a, like a kilo or two. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. I always will lose weight weird. when I'm on something. It's funny. Um, <laughs> that's why I've gained so much weight recently. So <laughs> no, you look amazing. <laughs> But um, 
and, and well, and now I have a rule when I'm on set because my one of my very first commercials I did was a Weight Watchers commercial and I gained no. weight on the Weight Watchers set. It what? was like a multiple day shoot and they had the most amazing craft services and I gained weight. That's- and now my rule is that when I'm on set, I try to eat as healthy as possible. Also yeah. because I need to fuel my body in a different way when I'm on yeah. set because it is yeah. like the days are just so much longer. And and yeah. and it's funny because like, I, I feel like I burn more calories doing theater. Yeah. It's just the amount of space you take up. But there is something, it's because the your brain is just working in a different way when you're on set. And so yeah. it's just tired. It's yeah. tired. It just it's gets- tiring. Let's yeah. also talk about the stamina that um, publicity takes. Yeah. Because Ingrid, you've just gone on a publicity whirlwind. Yeah. Tell us all about that. I want to know, Kate, what was the decision? When did you decide that you needed a publicist? What was, what's that process even like? Um. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Lots of thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, like, uh, I remember Hillary told me once, like, you know, you, you know, when you need one. Um, so I did this, I, I filmed Disenchanted and I thought, you know, that's, that's that. Then I visited LA to see my friend in April. So I shot in March and I visited my friend in April and uh, I came back in September to do a photo shoot um, as part of my like, you know, career advancement, you know, all this stuff. I was like, I need some like, I need to like be, you know, where you, where you're like, photos. yeah, no, like yeah. when, photos. and were you living yeah. in London at the time? Sorry. Just I, to- yeah. Yeah. Time and space. You were living, living in, in London. London. Where was yeah. the shot? Was it shot in London? It was shot in Ireland the year before. And then I got hired to do additional photography so that means that they added a scene to advance the story um so part I you know sometimes you're like I'm gonna get cut but like uh these these scenes are added for a reason um so chances are you're pretty much gonna be in the thing but you know um so (laughs) part of my career trajectory I was like well if you want to be at the level you got to be at the level already before you're at the level so I got these shots it's like they they were part of like uh I was working with Audrey as well and um we we agreed like you need editorial shots because the the type of women that you're being pitched like same same as um there are like they're badass women they're leading ladies and all this stuff so I was like yep I need those shots and so I got funny. this photographer exact same conversation with Audrey yeah so you guys are talking about Audrey Moore Audrey Moore of Audrey Helps yeah. Actors podcast oh, yeah. everybody like, listen that podcast is incredible and it's a good I think it's a really good lesson which is yeah. that you're looking at the people who are booking or going out with you looking at their own publicity and marketing materials and then going mm-hmm. Is it, like I love how you said you have to be at the level before you're at the level. Or if you want yeah. to be at the level, like you have yeah. to make it look like you're at that level, and then you'll be yeah. at that. Level. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like yeah, it's optics, and it's a like, whole thing is optics, right? Like yeah, this, and this manifesting is, as well. Yeah. Like I'm deep into that because I, you know, when I was third, whenever Grace Anatomy started, I was like Patrick Dempsey, love him gonna oh. work with him one day might have said I would marry him, but he's obviously married, so <laughs> I was like gonna work with him. Guess what? I got to work with him. So something's working. <laughs> yeah, something's working. <laughs> but you also um, manifested a red carpet. I oh, yes. hear. Yes, yes. I <laughs> did. So yeah, so I, I went to do this photo shoot. My friend had done um uh, a scene in reboot for Hulu and she had gotten this publicist because she and her boyfriend wrote a uh an episode or it was going to be it was a short film but like going to be maybe a tv series down the line um and they got this awesome hustling uh publicist and she was like maybe you know because hulu is disney so like she's got connections maybe talk to her so i got in touch with this publicist and she's like this is awesome. You've got a scene opposite the sky, like, and, and her and I vibed really well. Like we had a good energy. So she's like, let me just check my contacts. I'll get back to you in a week. She got back to me two days later. She's like, you've got two tickets and they they're allowing you to do press on the carpet and before. And I was like, she's like, this is unheard of. I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) God. I don't know. Like, this is weird. Um, so then, uh, I was like, you're obviously coming with me as my plus one. Um, and, uh, I was like, 
I was like, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. You gotta, and it's that thing of Audrey say, saying, you gotta, if you want to be at the Olympic level, you like, you're going to have to think like them and the, you're going to have to train and all of this stuff. Like, and it's, I was like, right, this is like, you gotta like m spend money to make money. So I was like, she's gonna, you know, and she was very much like, I think this is going to be good for you. And I was like, hundred percent, I feel good about this. So like hired her she started because they're part of a big international network that they have access to all the pu pu publicity outlets in the world so she started pitching me for a story I had been pitching myself in Norway for newspapers in the past so I knew how to like spin a story and make it interesting about myself not that it's not true but you make it sound a little bit more appealing like Norwegian coming up living in London you know all this stuff so then we started getting like some press people interested. She has some connections. So a couple podcasts and stuff like that. And then um, I got like one of the biggest fashion magazines in Norway, got one of the biggest newspapers, but that came because I was starting to do press and they were like, oh, she's good. She can talk about herself. And then, um, got, then I was like, right, what am I going to wear? And then a friend was like, why don't you see if you can borrow something? I was like, good idea. And then uh, long story short, uh, I contacted this, Nor uh, I got my publicist to contact one of these up and coming new Norwegian brands who want a little publicity. So then they were like, yes, here's an archival dress. And I was like, fit me like a glove. I was like, done and dusted. They'll get publicity. They were so nice. They sent me some pieces for me to keep. I was oh. like, what is this world? This is so cool. And then I've gotten to know the designer now and she's so sweet and amazing and talented. So that's that's awesome as well to have that connection. So then I I was like, right, jumping on a plane, going to LA. I was there for five days, uh, did a couple of press things and then I did the red carpet. And this is, <laughs> it was at the El Capitan on Hollywood Boulevard. And I was oh, like, oh my yeah. God. You did it. Oh, your dad your daddy i'd never been to that movie theater so when they were like the guy was playing the organ in the beginning and then the movie came on like halfway through the movie i think adina when or like towards the end where adina was singing i was like i can't believe that i'm sitting here like i had a little cry to myself because i was yeah. like it's so weird my dad always said and i've always been like um Oh God, I don't want to cry, but like I've always been like a very stubborn, determined child, even though I was so shy. I was like, one day I'll get over my shyness and I'll do all these things. So like the fact that it, like <laughs> I actually did it, I was did like, it. huh, I could maybe, you know, if if, if you things mean? ended now, at least I've done like one thing that like my dad was hoping for me to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so um, yes. In the interest of transparency, were yeah. you offered what sort of packages were you offered with your publicist, and what was the cost of those? So, in the, in the interest of transparency, because I think we should share information, um, she, her standard fee is like two thousand five hundred on a monthly basis, Ooh. um, but you're on her roster. Uh, even though you're not paying her, uh, this is how most of them work. So you would pay a retainer and then you only really work with them when you need them, like for a project, I guess in my, in my situation, like I don't, I, you know, I, I don't have anything right now that I would need right. her to work on. So it just helps me not to have to spend that kind of money uh, and her not to have anything to work on. It was a retainer that you paid. Yeah. Runs. Yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, okay. So, but she she was kind of knocked off a little bit because it was such a short um press run up until the thing. So that was really nice. Um but again, I don't know how the high end one like she is she's high end, don't, don't get me wrong, but like she right. out, out of the big there are tears. Offices, yeah, there are tears for sure. Uh cuz she, she's not part of a big office. Like she's for herself, she's got her own company, but she's such like like she is certainly in somebody I I need uh, who's like she's she's I wouldn't say she's at my level like she's definitely like higher higher tier whatever but like 
she has the hustling mentality. She's like, I want to make you a star. I'm like, I want to make me a star too. <laughs> like she's like up and, you know, she's like, you know, she was saying like jokingly to my friend and I, she's like, don't fucking forget me when you're famous. And we're like, never, <laughs> but she's, she's got that like fighting spirit. And like, same with my agents, like they, like they just started during lockdown and sh within the last three years have like grown so much. Like, and my agents, like my personal goal for you this year is to like land you a lead role. Like, I just yeah. want you to be seen for like leads now. And I'm like, it's, you need these people who are like just as hungry as you are. So yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I had a publicist who was horrible. And like, oh I think it's so important for anyone who's listening, like, don't, um, like there's, it's like, there are so many amazing publicists. And then there are so many publicists who are just not going to do like horrible. Anything. How? Like I paid this woman so much money and nothing, nothing, like literally nothing other than one of my best friends. I met her through her. We ended up on the same carpet together and she was in front of me because we were grouped together. And, um, and we became friends and our conversation was like, this is horrible. Like that was like a whole conversation. It was like, this is horrible. And now we're best friends. Everyone's like, how'd y'all meet? I'm like, we had the same horrible publicist. But it was a really good lesson in terms of like, not all publicists are, are created equal. It's mm -hmm. like finding a rep. You have to find people who believe in you, who want to work for you, who have right. the connections. Yeah. That you need. I think when all people are, they think that everyone's kind of connected in the same way. And it's not, it's the, case. No. It's not the case. I also think it's important to note that like, this isn't magic, you know, like no. you don't get, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't just like be a good actor and then magically every, no. everyone in, your, in magazines, yeah. like it's not magic. There's a process and an actor spends a lot of money to be an actor. Yes. Spend money. Yes. Make money. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, I can't, you know, I, I mean, and, and look, I did this too. Like I remember when moving out here and being like, but my friend has a really good camera. So they'll take my headshot. Right. And then you no. go, no, no, if I'm in, if I'm a casting director, I want to get the most professional experienced actor for my project. Yeah. The only way I can tell that is based off of their resume and then their headshot. And if it's like shitty lighting, shitty quality, why would I think that they're pouring anything into their business? You know, like yeah. again, it's it's I, I call it like I don't want to like sound cynical, but I call it a bit like you have to play the game. You yeah. have to play the and, game. And right. I'm sure I've like stolen this from from like wisdom words from Audrey or something. But it's like it is like moving up in tears and like seeing like, right. OK, so now I know how to do this. What can I learn next? And like, how do I you know, who do I need to work with to to get next you know to the next step like who do I want to bring into my like little team like I'm just like manifesting for the future so like I've meet these really cool people now and I'm like okay so they're on my team you know like it, not as in like my team team but like we've worked together we have a good relationship I'm they're lovely I'm lovely like you know we can like I don't know if any of this is making sense but no, I've, no. I've met some really cool people lately and and we've become friends so it's 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 just building that group of people that like want to see you succeed and like surprisingly if like you're a nice person and you're so like these people are I, I'm wildly fascinated by their artistry I think they're incredibly talented people and it's like it's not even people who do what like what we do it's like you know people who create costumes or it's like people who do like certain things and I've just I've made some really good connections and and I think it's important to just like have those people yeah I mean connections is really like what this is about right like this yeah. is about inter interpersonal connections and people who want to make the same kind of stories and mm -hmm. I I feel like so many people especially actors who are new they get discouraged because they're like what ah, you hear it's about you who you know it's about who you know and I yeah I disagree to a point I think it's who you meet and who you yes. continue to show up for and you yes everyone has the same chance to meet people and it's yeah about got to get out and you got to keep trying and you also 20 year friend bring it you yeah. have yourself and you have to let people see who you are yeah and because and honestly don't know who you are yeah. yeah exactly and then honestly like being so grateful to be in the position that you get to be in especially at, at a job like like at my job recently I was just like thanking everybody to just like 
for the time. Like it was like really long hours and everyone was so nice to me. And I would just, I just remember to like say thank you and like ask kindly and stuff. And like, they were so like, thank you for being nice. And I'm like, oh my God, it doesn't take that much. <laughs> yeah. And also I'm so grateful they picked me. Come on. Like <laughs> uh, it's so much harder to be and, and yeah. So much harder to be mean and it just that never helps anyone or anything. I always tell my students I'm like if you when you go to set you cannot complain at all about how tired you are I know we were just talking about how tired everyone it else is. is so much more tired everyone else is you. so much more tired like everyone else you are the last yeah. one to arrive and the first one to leave and you like, yeah. sit and get your makeup done, done for yes. hours and then you just get to go sit and crafty like you do not get yeah. to complain <laughs> about yeah. Like we can all talk about how tiring it is, but when yeah. you set, that, you do not get to do not let a set PA hear that yeah. you are tired. <laughs> no, I literally like, I think just like for, for anyone who's like starting out or whatever, like you're going to do a lot of waiting and yeah. a lot of waiting and that's okay. Just like entertain yourself, like in your brain, like, or bring a book, whatever, like you cannot complain because it's not about you in that in that respect it's they're setting up the shot they're doing light like it's all the technical stuff and like they're doing their best to do a great job so I don't know I and just find a lot of waiting like also just in your career yeah. like it's, yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of waiting but I, I want to point out that I think the through line here for you Ingrid and one of the reasons I, I love you and I feel like a kinship with you is like you are always like even starting back, you know, at the very beginning and hearing about your journey, you're always going, oh, that's okay. So cool. How do I, how do I get there? How do I get to be around the people who I can learn from at that, at that tier? And how do I like, even like pick my right classes, right? Like, how do I like create this <laughs> path? Like it is a strategy it's, and it's, it, it, it is, it's not this magical thing. It is magical, but it's also not yeah, this magical yeah. thing. I don't do anything and it just happens it like yeah. it's yeah. about being really focused and strategic and, yeah. and and obviously like badass and kick-ass at what you do yeah <laughs> thank you we're That's gonna nice. have to wrap up um yeah. but Ingrid I want to know something you're excited about we Monica have you met Monica I haven't uh Monica's Monica right. is a guru for um the holistic holistic the words holistic uh yeah. she's a guru and teaches us how to be holistic actors um oh. and one thing that I really love is when she's helping us learn how to authentically navigate relationships and communication uh she taught us a thing called rosebud thorn um rose is something that you're really excited about that you feel like is blooming but is something mm -hmm. that feels new to you that you are expanding in and learning in and thorn mm -hmm. is something that you're struggling in or you could use some help with mm -hmm. tell oh. us your rosebud and your thorn um okay my rose that's the blooming one mm -hmm. um this year okay my rose for this year has been the connections I've made from my recent uh kind of self-talk about like where I want to be in the future and like what I want to do and that has like instantly attracted these like really freaking cool people into my life talking um, about what, it openly or just with yourself um I had a I I saw a film and I was like okay that's what I want to do in the future I don't know if I told, told you about that Alex uh but okay so I saw Tar <laughs> and I was like uh-huh that's Yes. That's the level of art that I want to do one day. And then um, because I because of all this press and stuff, I've connected with a really cool uh, photographer that I looked up to and I got to work with him. So now my career is moving slightly more artsy. I got to work with this director that I really wanted to work with. Um, and that's going to be a cool project as well. And then um, I met this person who like is a sick ass tailor uh, maker all of the above and she is on uh Kate's team actually and she's working with me on on something so I think that's oh, really God. cool are you getting a pantsuit I have a suit that she's yes. fixing at the moment oh um, my God. and she is the coolest person I've met I'm such a fan of her because she's done most of Kate's outfit for the award season and I connected her with her and that was that was really cool so <laughs> so I think for me, I feel like things are brewing 
and I'm just feeling like really good at the moment. So that's my rose. I think a continuous bud is like um, the idea of like, yeah, uh, the DOPs work, which fascinates me infinitely. And I think I'm really curious about what, like more of that, <laughs> you know, like the guy I just work with, he's shot some really cool stuff. And I was like, oh my God, how, like, how does his brain work? You know, like the idea of like, visualizing stuff is because I'm such a visual person as well. Am I, I, I guess maybe that's somehow an answer. Yeah. I don't something know. Something visually, something DOPs. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Love Perfect. That. Love it. Love Thorne, it. Is there anything anyone out there could help you with? Um, good energy for? A thorn for me is just um learning how to sit with the down times, like when you don't have a project and like, that's okay. Like, <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's Absolutely. okay. I, but I get in like a real dip, but then something seems to happen in the in the dip. So I think I just need to like, for me, continuously trusting the universe as woo-woo as that sounds. And, and, oh. and then when you don't work, like just educate yourself on something. Do, do the coaching, do the training, I guess. That's... Do you have anything that you do in those times when you're in kind of the waiting periods that are a distraction that aren't, you know, art related at all, maybe? So the... I'm really, yeah, I'm a firm believer uh, and I've attracted the right people into my life, but like I'm a firm believer in like having until you, having a day job until you can't anymore because I've attracted a sort of day job where like my boss is pr pretty much one of my biggest fans. So he's like, anytime you have a, a project, like go do your thing. Like he wants me to succeed, but that also takes the weight off of, I need to book this job. I need yeah. to make the money. Yeah. So like, it's still within the arts. Yeah. Like we currently my, my day job we're doing, we did, we created, Taylor Swift's era tour like that's that's Whoa. what we're doing yeah and like we did Rihanna's um halftime show so it's like the technical side of it so it's still in the arts um and it's a really cool job my boss is the best and I think for me that's having something to take the focus off of your career like I think the people who the, their main sole focus is like how do I get like a, how do I become famous how do I get the big projects like I think it's it's so hurtful in many ways because it makes you very like insular like or, or too too self-obsessed of over your career in many ways and I don't think that energy helps when it makes the success uh results based which yeah. yes it can't be that yeah it's no. impossible that yeah you know so yeah. it helps you find if you have something that is distracting you can find success in just doing like yeah. doing yeah. a little part for a day you know yeah. like doing an audition or like exploring some like a part that's exciting to you without yeah. the idea of a result yeah yeah and actually something Audrey was saying as well, she's like, you know, she was like, so how many hours can you de dedicate to like <laughs> your acting career? And I was like, you know, I'm like Virgo, I'm like 24 hours a day. Like, you know, but, uh, I, I gave like an estimate. I know. I was like an <laughs> estimate. I was like, maybe 14. She's like, okay, because I want you to have a life as well. And I was like, oh, that. Okay. Because um, <laughs> like. Cause like life makes us better actors. So like for me, like I started adopting this new thing of like, I need to read 15 minutes in the morning, just like read, because I think expanding your mind, like seeing different points of views, like anything helps in being a better actor. And I think, you know, what did you read? Well. Today? Um, today I didn't read anything. Cause I'm like, I've got a, like a sleep hangover. Like I don't like I haven't slept, but I'm reading the tools currently by Dr. Phil Strutz. If you saw that documentary on Netflix, Strutz. Oh, the one with um Jonah Hill. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, we're going to link those below for everybody. To I was <laughs> crying. Well, tried read. so hard. Yeah, it's the tools. It's so good. Just in, uh, it, honestly, it's really good for actors as well because the first uh, thing is about getting out of your comfort zone and then it's giving you actual, because Phil Stutz is all about like giving you practical advice you can do right now. So it's like how to get out of your comfort zone. You need to go through the pain barrier to get to infinite possibilities. And I was like, huh, all my life in my career, I've forced myself out of my comfort zone. Like I guess I was doing the right thing. But then, you know, you have other things in your life that you don't do that with. 
Okay, I need to get his books. I've seen I've seen yeah. the documentary, but I haven't watched it yet. Okay. It's so good. Amazing. Awesome. Ingrid, where can we find you? Uh on Instagram for the Instagram. most part. What's your at? Ingrid Werner, I-N-G-R-I-D-W-E-R-N-E-R. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. and for all of your incredible I insight. You. I adore you. Nice. It was lovely to meet you, Haley. So good to meet you. Yeah. Hopefully in person soon. Yeah.